Hi, my name is Sarah Van Dyke. I am a third year PT student at Elon University and today we're going to talk about the effects of functional electrical stimulation on um, foot drop in patients who have had a stroke, um, so they're chronic stroke survivors. So uh, we're talking about a study by Ruth Van Schwiegen who um, looked at people who had had a stroke more than uh, six months prior to uh, recruitment for the study. Um, the patients were given a chance to adapt to the functional electrical stimulator for two weeks. They worked their way up to using the stimul stimulator six hours a day. And after that, for the remainder of the time, um, they wore the stimulator all day long. All of these patients had uh, prior been using an AFO. So um, I've got my electrodes here on Stephanie over her dorsal flexor muscles, innervated by the perineal nerve. And uh, what we're going to do is look at how well she can uh, clear an obstacle as I drop it on the treadmill. So this is looking at how well um, uh, someone who has survived a stroke and is dealing with a drop um, would fare in her head. Yep. Hi, my name is Sarah Van Dyke, and I'm hi. My name is Sarah Van Dyke, and I'm a third-year PT student here at Elon University. Today, we are going to be looking at the effects of a functional electrical stimulator on a chronic stroke patient who has been dealing with foot drop and has been using an AFO. According to the Center for Disease Control, 795,000 people in America suffer stroke each day. Most of these people are given an ankle foot orthosis to deal with um, the foot drop and the lack of dorsiflexion that happens on the contralateral side of the stroke. So this study by Ruse von Switchum looks at the effects of a functional electrical stimulator versus that um, more traditional AFO treatment. Um, in this study, 24 patients who had before been using their AFO um, switched to a functional electrical stimulator. They were given two weeks to uh, work their way up to using the stimulator for six hours a day. And after that, for the remainder of the study, they wore the stimulator all day long. Uh, to test the effects of the stimulator, the patients were put on a treadmill like this one. And um, we have a stimulator on here. I have a stimulator over uh, the dorsiflexor muscles innervated by the perineal nerves on Stephanie. So Stephanie, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and step up on the treadmill. Okay. So what they did um, to test her foot clearance and her reaction time is to drop objects, such as I have here, as the treadmill is going. The treadmill speed was 1.3 miles per hour to 1.9, depending on the patient's functional level. So I'm going to go ahead and start the treadmill. And we're going to increase the speed to a point where Stephanie feels comfortable walking. We're going to stay at 1.3. Does that feel good? Okay. So the parameters that we're using on our FES, um, we have a pulse rate of 30 hertz and a phase duration of 200 microseconds, and we would just increase the amplitude to um, wherever the patient is comfortable with it being. So, Stephanie, I'm going to start dropping the objects. I want you to um, just react as you would as if you were on the street and something fell or blew in front of you, okay? And we're trying to drop right in front of the effective limb. Alright, so I need a little practice with that, but you can stop and go ahead and have a seat. So the effects of the study showed that the patients or the participants who used the functional electrical stimulator um, had a quicker reaction time, they were able to clear more objects, um, and uh, those who measured lower on the mortality index scale initially uh, showed more gains from using the functional electrical stimulator than those who maybe scored a little bit higher. So um, based on these results, 
I would consider using a functional electrical stimulator for somebody who has had a stroke um, and is um, dealing with the chronic effects of that in my practice.